This video will be going over solutions to common and notorious problems people have with the Elgato capture device. This is both the HD60 and HD60S. These solutions will work in both OBSs, so Streamlabs OBS and OBS Studios. And I imagine it would also work in XSplit and other streaming software or video capture software. I don't have any experience outside of OBS, so I'm just showing how to solve it in this, but I'm sure equivalents exist in other video capture software. So without wasting anyone else's time, we're gonna go ahead and get started with some of the problems that people have. So the first one is what we're seeing exactly here, where the game won't display on OBS. It'll either say no signal, or it will say one moment please, and it just won't display. This won't happen if you have the game plugged in, and if you have the Elgato ready to go before you load up OBS. It's only if you have OBS up and then you launch then you uh, then you plug in your device, your game, or whatever. So when you're here, what you're going to want to do is you are going to want to right-click on the Elgato software right here, and you're going to want to click Properties. And it will bring up a screen. In this screen, you're just going to want to simply click Deactivate, and then Activate. And this will display the game. This will get it up. And that's, like I said, it's a very common problem with a very simple solution, but this is how you get it up and running. You'll be able to see the game and you'll be able to, to, to move about and do everything that you want to do. If I can get rid of this black box now. So you'll be able to move, you'll be able to play the game. It should be at whatever speed you have it set, but I'll show how to edit that a little bit later. So that's how you get the game to display. The other issue that people have is that the audio won't play from their PC. So you'll be playing your game and the game will be mute unless you have it plugged in, unless you have it like also going out to a TV. So your game will be completely mute for you, but your audience will be able to hear it. But it'll be mute for you, you won't be able to hear anything. A lot of people resort to like getting like an audio splitter on their device or having headphones plugged into their TV, but the solution for this is very simple. A lot simpler than people think it is. So back on the display, back on your OBS screen, you're going to want to go over here to Mixer and you're going to want to click the little gear right here that opens advanced audio settings. If you're on regular OBS, what you're going to want to do is you're going to want to go to your audio mixer and you're going to want to click any of the gears and go to advanced audio properties. It'll be the bottom option. Once you're actually in the advanced audio settings or the advanced audio properties, both screens look identical, so this next step is going to be exactly the same, or mostly the same, depending on your device. So once you're in here, the Elgato, over here on the Elgato, you're going to have two, you're going to have three options, monitor off, monitor mute output, and monitor and output. What you pick is going to entirely depend on your setup as for capturing footage or for streaming. For me personally, I have desktop audio on, so that way it can capture whenever I get like a new sub or when I get a new follower or when someone donates some bits or whatever. So that way Streamlabs can work. So I have monitor, so I have it set to play my desktop audio. So because I have it set that way, I have it set to monitor only mute output. This will make it so that way I can hear the audio and my audience can hear the audio since it's playing through the desktop audio but I don't have to worry about the an echo effect because it will, if you have it on monitor and output, it'll, it'll play the audio twice and it'll sound like an echo effect or it'll sound a little bit louder. It'll kind of give this weird, like, weird effect that most people want to avoid. So again, this all depends. If you don't have desktop audio on, you have to, you would have to set it to monitor and output. Otherwise, if you have desktop audio on, you're gonna want to set it to monitor only. Again, this is all dependent on your setup. This is just how I have it set. Everyone's different, so you'll have to figure out what works best for you. And then the last major issue that people have with the Elgato is that the audio will be distorted. A lot of people get distorted audio or their audio will crack. They'll be playing a game and almost sound muffled and certain pitches will just like start crackling. It's a really bad experience for both the viewer and for the streamer. And it's, it still gives me issues even with my setup. I probably get it about 20, 25% of the time. 
again, a lot of it just depends on how the device feels that day. Some people have more issues with it, but there are simple solutions to fixing that. So the first thing you're going to want to do once we, we need to go back to, so we'll see if it's doing it right. Sounds okay so far. So we are getting a clean, the easiest way to test to see if you're at least on switch, the easiest way to test if your screen, if your audio is cracking is if you click right here on your little player icon, it'll do a little whistle. If your audio is muffled or having issues, the whistle will crack and it'll sound really bad. And it'll be very noticeable that something's up with the audio and you'll have to start tinkering with it. So once you actually start tinkering with it, what you're gonna wanna do is you're gonna wanna go to your Elgato, you're gonna wanna right click it and go back to properties like we had earlier. Except when you're here, you're going to want to go to configure video. Now, I don't know if this really matters. This is just how I've kept it up to date. You're gonna to wanna to make sure your input device is set to whatever device you're streaming with. So if you're using a Nintendo Switch, a Wii U, a PS3, PS4, 360, Xbox One, um, an iPad, a PC, whatever you're using, you're gonna to wanna to make sure it's set to whatever input device. Just, again, I'm not sure 100% if this is exactly, but this is what I found most consistent is if I have it set to the right input device, the audio problems won't really be there. So hopefully that will set, the profile doesn't really matter whether you have it at 720 or 1080. And then this will allow you, if you're on desktop mode, this will allow you to independently change the audio of the game. That way you're not messing with the desktop audio. So that way you can change it. I just have it set to 66, but you could lower it down to like 50 or 40. A lot of this is game dependent as well. So just tinker with it until you find something that you're comfortable with. Once you're out of that, you're going to want to go ahead and deactivate the device. And you're going to want to unplug it. So you're going to want to physically unplug it from your computer. So whether it's from the actual like USB port, you're going to want to unplug it or you're going to want to get up if you, unless you have your device next to you and then unplug it from the Elgato. Uh, I've done both. I've done one. I've done the other. It's, it's whatever you can get working. It really just depends on how the device is feeling that day. Plug it back in. Give it about 10, maybe 15 seconds at most. Once it's been enough time, you're going to go ahead and click activate and then it will display it again. So we'll go ahead and bring it back up. This may not work on the first attempt. You may, uh, you may have to do this a couple times. You may have to uh, tinker with it until it keeps working. It, sometimes it's taken me like three or four times to get it working. And then again, you're just gonna click on your little profile if you're on Switch. If you're on a, like a PlayStation or an Xbox, there's other ways to check it. Obviously loading up a game, if you load up maybe some kind of like video or audio test, that's another way of checking. If you hear the whistle though on Switch, you're all good. Once it's there, you are all set to go. So the last quick thing I wanna talk about, this is more of, I had this issue and a couple other people had this issue, but if you have a problem with the Elgato constantly disconnecting, what it usually is is that your USB 3 port is not working, at least on your PC. And the cheapest, I'd say cheapest, but the simplest way of fixing that is to just buy a, a USB port. The one I suggest is this Anchor USB 3.0 Super Speed port. I've had this thing for about eight months and I haven't had a single disconnect since. But again, this will all vary depending on, on, uh, on you, right? On, on your setup. If you feel like opening up your PC and changing out the 3.0 port, go ahead. I know with mine, I have an older PC and the voltage wasn't outputting because it wasn't even picking up other devices. Like I had bought an arcade stick and it wasn't even registering the arcade stick. It just said it wouldn't work. But the power hub allows you to plug that into a wall and have that voltage power the device. And then your computer just picks up the signal. It's very simple. It sucks that you have to spend money there's no quick and dirty solution in like your PC settings. It's just, it's a hardware thing. So there are cheaper solutions other than Anchor. This isn't sponsored or anything. It's just the one that I've used. Like I said, I've had for eight months and I've had no problems with it. So go wherever you go, wherever you think is best. Anyways, that's going to wrap it up. I hope this helps somebody and I hope this makes video capture easier for some people. So hopefully your day is good and enjoy playing your games. So take care.